Thank you all so much for the your hands. Thank you all so much for being here. We are very excited to see um, all the eighth grade Mavericks up here with us. Um, being here in this particular presentation, um, Ms. Seltzer and I were discussing earlier that every time that we see our Mavericks students in the hallways or in the classrooms, uh, we always notice uh, the, the amount of potential for greatness that all of you have. And the presentation that um, Ms. Campos, I would like a big round of applause for Ms. Campos for the Senate Club. This presentation that Santa Club and Ms. Apples have put together for you focuses specifically on that, on um, uh, the, the, the potential for greatness that all of you have. Uh, our guest speaker today uh, is an assessment to that, an assessment to, to the greatness that can be achieved. Uh, a gentleman that started off very much like you, he and Pass, uh, with a very similar background to so most of you, and, uh, and is now achieving great, great things. Um, I would also, uh, at this particular point, would like to uh, present to you also the administration here of the school. Uh, for some of you guys that might not know who we all are, um, the administration we have, uh, Ms. Silvia Chavarria, our dean of we have Mr. Sisson from the right, Mr. Sisson from the left here. Here's your instructional officer, Mr. Sisson from the left. We have the assistant principal from seventh grade, Ms. Dora Tapia. The assistant principal for eighth grade, Mr. Pedro Castillo. And of course, we have our fearless leader, our principal, the Fair Supper. Thank you all as well, administration, for allowing this to happen. Uh, at this particular point, I'm going to ask you, everybody, uh, to get on your feet, please, to stand up. Do I need my attention, please?
successful law practice specializing in personal injury litigation in his hometown of Eagle Pass. From 2005 to 2009, he served as a trustee on the Eagle Pass ISD board, as well as served on the Maverick County Tax Appraisal District. On January 8, 2013, Representative Elias was sworn in as state representative for House District 74. He was appointed to the International Trade and Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Culture, Recreation and Tourism Committee, and the Rules and Resolutions Committee. Representative Elias is passionate about supporting and funding public education, border infrastructure, and fighting to represent the rights of the undeserved. He was humbled to be named freshman of the year by his colleagues in the House Democratic Caucus. Representative Nevarez and his wife, Rosie Guadalajara de Nevarez, are the proud parents of three children, Renata, Romina, and Alfonso Hernana, a.k.a. Portugal. Without further ado, here he is, Representative Alfonso Porto Nevarez. Two hours long, and I lost it. The good news is I have a photographic memory, so I remember every word. I actually it is me. And for those of you who were here before, please act like you haven't heard some of the things I'm about to say. Right? Look surprised. And for those of you who are here for the first time, I'm going to tell you this is going to be the best piece because I'm all warmed up. How's that? between September and October. And if you don't, it's okay, because I just recently found out myself. Anybody? The reason is, is because most, several Latin American countries, including the ones that have more migration in the U.S., like Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, they celebrate their Independence Day right around September 15th or September 16th. And so we use a whole month to, we get a whole month to celebrate this kind of heritage. And I think also because Christopher Columbus, you know, right along came to the New World in and around uh, early October. So that's why we go from September to October. And so I, you know, I told my, my colleagues in the house that for me, Hispanic Heritage Month is every month. I don't necessarily think that we need to pick one month and say this is the one we're going to celebrate who we are, where we came from, and, and what our possibilities are. And so I tend to think that Hispanic Heritage Month is one month a year. So that's just me. But I would encourage you to look at, look at yourself in the same way because uh, I, I shared this statistic with the seventh graders before is, I don't know if y'all realize this, but Hispanic students make up more students of any other population in the state of Texas. There's more Hispanics in public schools right now today than there are Asian Americans, white Americans, African Americans. It uh, doesn't matter any other race or ethnicity. There are more of us in public schools in the state of Texas than anybody else. And what that tells me is that it's very important for us, one, to be... Are we ready? It tells me that it's very important for us to be proud of where we came from and very important for us to take on the responsibility of leadership because when there's more of us, that means we're going to be. And I wish for each and every one of you to put yourself in positions to succeed and to lead. I can tell you that growing up in my house, it wasn't a question of, are you going to college? It was, where are you going to college? And if you have that kind of support, my mother and my sister are here. Uh, and I remember, you know, Laura sitting right here too, and she knows me from when I used to sell shoes at the mall in I have a funny story about selling shoes, I'll tell you a little bit after that. But uh, if you have that support at home, great. That is awesome. But if you don't, it's okay. You're still going to be all right because there's plenty of people around you that love you and care for you. And those are your teachers. Your friends sometimes, even your parents or your teachers will tell you, you know, be careful of your friends and they lead you down the wrong road. Well, that's true. But you also may have friends who lead you down the right road that'll motivate you, that'll push you, that'll support you, that'll love you, 
and that will want you to honestly succeed. And those are the friends that you need to have. And if you have those friends among you, I'm sure each and every one of you is like that. If you have those friends, those are the ones you want. So if you don't have that support at home, it's okay. I'm here to tell you you're going to be all right because we have plenty of support here. And I, I, I was fortunate that I didn't have to look very far outside my home for that support. But it's also important to hear that you're doing things well. You know, your parents can tell you that you're doing good. My mom tells me, you know, how wonderful I am every day, which is true. <laughs> but it's very important that you hear that from somebody who's not your mother or your sister or your wife or your dad or your kids. Although my kids sometimes don't tell me I'm wonderful. They tell me some other things. My, my middle child gives me a list of things that I need to improve on. She's like, Dad, you need to work on this and that. And she's not walking in the mouth, she's right. But we need to hear that we're doing things well, not just from our parents, but we need to hear from our teachers, from the administration. We need to hear from our friends that we're doing things well. Because it, it's important to have that self-awareness that not only are you doing things good at home, but you're doing them uh, good outside the home. I can tell you, when uh, I graduated, you know, when I was about your age, I wasn't really, I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer, I just wasn't sure how I was going to get there. And I went out to the University of Texas, I graduated in 1994, then I graduated from law school in 1999. And I practiced law in San Antonio for a while, and then I came back to the Pass. And I always had an office in San Antonio, so I was kind of coming back and forth. And at the time, we were, we were trying cases in different parts of the country, so I was, I was moving around a lot, and I was basically living out of a suitcase. And I was telling this to seventh grade before is when I moved back, I moved in next door to Miss Sumter. She was my neighbor. And when I moved in next door to Miss Sumter, I was single. And then 12 years later, when we moved out, I had a wife and I had three kids. And so my life changed dramatically from the time I started practicing law to where I am now. And um, I remember when I started traveling around trying these lawsuits, I ended up in Los Angeles. I tried a case in Los Angeles for about three weeks. I was in a courtroom in downtown LA. And I thought to myself, man, the weather's great out here. It's really nice. And there's a lot of people, but the weather was really nice. And I really liked the movies. I said, you know what? Let's get in the movie business. So my law partner and I started getting involved in the movie business. And we didn't make a lot of money at it, but we had fun. And I've always tried to make the things that I do not work. I, I like to tell people, you know, I don't feel like I've worked in my life. I feel like I've done things, jobs, but they haven't been worked for me. They've been fun. Even when I sold shoes, I really enjoyed doing that. When I bagged groceries at HEB, it was the first time I had. I enjoyed doing that. When I was a lifeguard, it wouldn't work for me, it was fun. And even now, you know, as I, I got to the state house, I remember I was sitting in a meeting with some very high-ranking officials from the federal government and the state government. And one of the state officials, I'll tell you, he was governor, he was getting upset at me a piece of legislation that I filed. And we're in a very small room. And as he's talking to me, you know, He's upset with me. He's talking to me. I'm thinking to myself, wow, how did I get here? This is awesome. And even when the governor was getting mad at me, I'm like, this is so cool. The governor's getting mad at me. Right? But then I started looking at the governor. I'm like, how did he get here? And anyway. It'll, it'll be funny later, Christian. But I remember as, as I did these things, and I came back, and I was practicing law, and moved back to Eagle Pass, I, I, I said to myself, I said, one of the things I learned at home was to serve. I learned that from my parents. My parents served us, you know, number one, but they also served the church. And we grew up behind our lady of refuge and I grew up at church. And uh, I didn't always want to be at church, but my parents inculcated that in us and they made us very aware of how important our faith was when we did those things. But I learned that part of service. And so the first thing that I did to serve is I got on the school board. And the reason I got on the school board is because I was very interested in school. I'd been, and I wasn't too far removed from being in school, just like you were or are, and I wanted to help. And I met some amazing people, and I, I really you know, got to understand how hard and how awesome the job is your teachers and your administrators. You know, my cousin Pedro is the assistant principal here, and I'm very proud of him because, one, he's, he's an amazing individual, and two, I know he really cares about you. And, and also, somebody like Miss Sumter, you know, I was joking about her being my neighbor, but I was always very impressed and I can tell you, if you don't know this, that she's great. She is an awesome, awesome administrator. And she does a great job. I was always very proud of the fact that she was one of the principals when I was uh, on the school board. And uh, I was always very proud of the, the, 
the games and the things that she was doing with her school, and I'm very proud of the fact that she needs this campus. So she's an amazing woman. So give her a big round of applause.
just, I know that. I can see that now. And if one of you becomes President of the United States,